Hello lovelies! So today we're going to be talking about the tragic life of Judy Garland and I'm also going to talk about her favorite perfumes and beauty products so make sure you stay until the end of the video to find out which beauty products she used. So who is Judy Garland and what made her life so tragic? Judy was the face of The Wizard of Oz, one of the most culturally significant and profitable films of all time. But little do we know that her name wasn't always Judy Garland. Yes, it wasn't. Her birth name was actually Frances Ethel Gum. Frances, also known by the world as Judy, was an Oscar-winning actress who starred as Dorothy Gale. Everywhere Judy went, it was lights, camera, fame, and action. Judy Garland was impoverished, virtually homeless, and owed thousands in unpaid taxes to the IRS when she was in her 40s and this was during the late 1960s. She was able to support herself by singing in bars for $100 a night. She was very unhappy and depressed during this time. And so what happened? How did she become this way? What caused one of Hollywood's brightest lights to fade so quickly? Here's the tragic story of Judy Garland. So Judy was raised by her demanding theatrical stage mom who only cared about her career. Judy's early success was the result of years of planning by her mother, Ethel Gum. Ethel Gum was a former vaudeville performer. She encouraged Judy's sisters to pursue careers in show business. Still, her mom saw that Judy was the most talented, and so she harnessed those talents in the most abusive way possible. Judy Garland even referred to her mother as the genuine wicked witch of the West, a reference to the villain from The Wizard of Oz. Ethel Gum began giving Judy sleeping medications at the age of 10 to help her sleep while on the road as a soloist when Judy started touring. In a 1967 interview with Barbara Walters, Judy revealed that her mother was a mean stage mother. She was envious since she lacked any talent, Judy explained. You get out and sing or I'll wrap you around the bedpost and break you off short. Her mom would threaten her if she wasn't feeling well. Every day from the age of 10, Judy was already working. She was a kid with big girl problems. Additionally, Judy Garland's studio was starving her. When she was signed to MGM at the age of 13, Judy was taken aback by the producers because her stunning singing voice made an impression. Yes, she was very talented and she was given a break because of her golden voice. But instead of her hopes coming true, Garland suddenly found herself in the middle of a nightmare. Her treatment at the studio was brutal. Judy Garland's eating habits were closely scrutinized by the studio, which was concerned about her weight. Food was frequently taken away from her, leaving her hungry all of the time. And this made her self-conscious about her appearance for the rest of her life. And yes, this was one of the heinous ways in which old Hollywood studios mistreated actors. Weight was a problem even for our growing 13-year-old girl. Judy Garland was also referred to as the ugly duckling of the industry, and she was forced to take medications by the studios. And this unfortunately spiraled into a lifelong addiction to drugs while working in the MGM studio. Back then, the company would frequently push its performers beyond their limits. Judy would work 18 hours a day, six days a week on almost every occasion. The studio would even give young Judy Garland pills to keep her going and to keep her skinny. She would also be given stimulants to keep her awake and sleeping drugs to put her asleep at night. And unfortunately, because she was drugged at such a young age, I think it gave her really bad habits, so this addiction just went on throughout her life. In later years, Judy was also sexually harassed on multiple occasions by studio leads of MGM. Louis B. Mayer actually complimented her voice by resting his hand on her chest, and Judy claimed that she was abused by at least one other studio boss whom she did not identify. When Judy turned down his advances, she claims he started yelling, threatening her to ruin her career and saying, I'll shatter you if this is the last thing I do. It was like a predator chasing a mouse. And that's how life was in her teenage years for her and many other young Hollywood actresses. And it does not stop there. Judy Garland unfortunately had a lousy love life and personal life. She was married five times because she was in such bad situations and just longing for love. She married a composer David Ross in 1941 when she was just 19 years old. Judy had also fallen pregnant but had to get an abortion, although abortion was still illegal at the time. 
Judy's mother and her studio, MGM, arranged for the surgery to be performed. And during this time, abortions were very widespread and common in Hollywood. And the studios didn't want to tarnish their performers' reputations as sex symbols and, in her case, as a child star. Many of Judy Garland's colleagues had abortions to save their acting career as well. This includes Betty Davis and Ava Gardner, to name a few. Either way, Judy Garland and her husband married on the spur of the moment in Las Vegas, but their union was very short. In 1944, they divorced. Again, she married her second husband, filmmaker Vincent Minnelli. And this was the following year. Liza, their daughter, was born and she thought they would be happy. However, their marriage again was very short-lived. In 1951, Minnelli and Judy divorced. And next, Judy remarried again a businessman named Sid Luft a year later. They had two children, Joey and Lorna. But her challenges did not stop there. Judy's tragic background along with her drug addiction caused her adult life to be filled with turbulence. Her negative self-image wasn't only the thing that kept her on the pills, it was also the excuse to keep taking them. So because she was forced all these pills at such a young age, I think it really messes up with your brain chemistry too. It takes down all the serotonin, so it's just so sad that this happened to her. And I'll just never be able to look at The Wizard of Oz the same. She also suffered from postpartum depression, which I think could be a combination of the prescribed drugs too. And she has been prescribed more medication and the medications she was previously taken. She had attempted to take her life twice after being sacked from MGM in 1950. Her despair contributed to the tension that led to her divorce from her second husband and over to her third. Sid Luff claimed that Judy attempted to take her life 20 times during their 13 year marriage. And in 1965, they finally divorced. Judy claimed that her fourth husband actor, Mark Herron, had hit her. The two had only been married a few months before they divorced. But Mark Herron was also attracted to men and eventually had a long term relationship with another actor. And last but not least is Mickey Deans, her fifth husband. But Judy Garland's status and fortune were deteriorating by this time as she neared the conclusion of her career. On June 22, 1969, Judy Garland passed away in her London home. She had accidentally overdosed and was only 46 years old. If you think she had taken away her own life because she was depressed during the last few months, Judy actually appeared to be in a good mood the night before she was discovered dead. Mickey Deans, her fifth husband, loved her so dearly. She said, Finally, I am loved. And it seems like Judy finally got everything she wanted and she was loved and had a loving relationship. Unfortunately, three months into their marriage, Mickey Deans discovered Judy dead in their bathroom. Her outstanding talents and weakness made her one of the most enduringly adored Hollywood icons of the 20th century, with 22,000 people attending her funeral in New York City. As for her fifth husband, surprisingly, Mickey Deans never remarried. And this is such a sad story because if Judy had not passed away, they could have still been together. And it turns out her fifth marriage could have been her happily ever after. So this is not to take away from how talented Judy Garland is and how incredible her voice is and she's one of my favorite old Hollywood actresses and I just love her films and I grew up watching The Wizard of Oz. I remember it was one of my favorite movies when I was a kid. So now that we've discussed her life, I want to touch on some of her favorite perfumes and beauty products. So when it comes to perfume, Judy Garland wore the fragrances Carbon Ma Griff and Carnation Perfume. You can still buy Ma Griff but Carnation unfortunately is not available anymore. Carvin was created in 1946, and this is a very fresh, dashing, and flowery fragrance. It's very classy and sophisticated, and the bottle is that classic green and white striped. And I also noticed that Judy was featured in several Lux toilet soap advertisements, as well as several Max Factor makeup advertisements, so I feel like there's a good chance that she most likely used these products as well. Max Factor was very common during this time period in Hollywood and so many old Hollywood movie stars were featured in Lux Soap ads and Lux Soap was founded by the Lieber Brothers and this was in 1899 
and let's toil itself launched in the United States in 1925 and the United Kingdom in 1928. And Max Factor was one of the first beauty brands created for old Hollywood actresses and for the stage. So there's a good chance Judy Garland used a Max Factor cream puff, the pan stick foundation, and a lipstick. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know if there's any other actresses you want me to do next. And also please don't forget to subscribe and hit the big red button below. And check out my YouTube channel membership. And with this membership you get one monthly live stream as well as one monthly bonus behind the scenes video and 20% off vintage doll cosmetics and a free vintage mirror with your first purchase. So I hope to see you there. Alright, I'll see you guys again soon. Bye!